Hey everybody, hello, this is Art again, and uh, today I'm going to read a story uh, called The Contraption. It's a working title. Uh, I was on set a couple of years ago with a friend of mine by the name of Laura Gao, and Laura is an actress in Los Angeles, also a comedian. She plays at, I want to say Flappers and Burbank quite a, few, quite a lot. Anyway, so uh, we were on set, and we were just goofing around, and I was telling her about the fact that I like to write stories, and I write stories for people when they come up with some ideas. I said, let's, you know, come up with some really key elements, some funny areas, and then I'll create a story out of it. Um, just give me, you know, so we went through, we did, like, the key elements. We did, you know, three scenes. That's, um, uh, we had, we had a... Um, uh, act 1, Act 2A, Act 2B, and then Act 3, and we put it all together. I said, well, you know, we can make either a feature out of this, but it'd probably be really good to make, like, a, um, uh, <laughs> I was thinking some sort of, like, series, uh, ABC, um, Disney, a, well, probably not ABC, but probably a Disney or a, um, uh, Nickelodeon type series out of this with, uh, you know, a, early teen come it's not even coming of age it's kind of a, you'll get it when i'm reading the story it's out there i said give me the craziest things and let's put them together in the story so this is what i came up with i gave it to her i called her like three days later and said hey guess what um i was actually taking a writing class with uh, pilar alessandra and uh um it was a we had like a 12 hour just focus on and that day i finished three stories it was just ridiculous how much I wrote. I wrote like 90 pages that day. Pilar was just like, you're crazy. But I come from Nashville. We write a lot in Nashville. Anyway. So, um, anyway, so this is a story. This is called The, Collect, uh, the Contraption. It's a story by Laura Gow and Art Wassum, Arthur Wassum. And it's written by Arthur Wassum Sr. So here are the first 10 pages. Interior Classroom Day. Any normal high school science classroom. There are five tables set in two rows. The teacher, Mr. Maddie, is a tall, thin Mr. Rogers looking man with a thick black glasses. The room is full of kids uh, with only two empty seats. One is next to Shiloh, a normal high school kid that looks amazingly like Michael J. Fox. Mr. Maddie, Shiloh, um, you're next. Are you ready for your presentation? Are you ready? Shiloh, um, <coughs> yes, sir. Shiloh fumbles through his backpack, and as he takes out his presentation, he throws chips all over the table. The room explodes in laughter and name-calling. Mr. Matty, okay, okay, settle down. Mr. Stanley, uh, you do know this is a presentation on recycling and cleaning up the environment and not causing more litter. Everyone laughs more. Shiloh, yes, sir, I'm sorry. Beginning to clean his area, Mr. Matty, uh, just come on up. You can do that later. Walking to the front of the class, Shiloh stands next to the teacher's desk. Shiloh, okay, my idea is very simple. We are using up all the natural resources on the planet and eliminating the natural environments that animal needs to survive. Their habitats. Well, what if we stopped all the building on the continents? What if for the next 10 years we collected all the trash on the planet and put it into a place in the ocean? We could create a new continent, kind of like in Mexico City. It was once on a lake and they built boats and they would farm on and trade and the roots grew through the bottom and anchored them. This is how the city grew. We could do that with all the trash in the world. We could start a shallow part of the ocean and then expand into the deeper parts. The animals could have their habitat back and we could grow, we could grow and not have to stop making Making trash. Mr. Matty, so you're saying add more trash to the oceans. I think you may have missed the point, Mr. Stanley. Uh, we would like to clean up our planet, not make it worse. Everybody laughs. Uh, Shallow, it would clean it up. It'd make the plastic walls so there wouldn't be any leakage in the ocean and they would expand in the co as the continent does. Mr. Matty, raising the sea level. Shallow, not much at the beginning, and as the natural habitats returned, the ice caps would also, causing less flooding. We could also start it at the most temperate part of the planet, so we would have very little use for heating and cooling. Uh, Mr. Matty, like a permanent Hawaii? Shallow, yes, but we can start it in either the Atlantic or South Pacific. Mr. Matty, how do you suggest... The door then opens to the room, and in walks the principal and a young female student. Love bubbles. 
She has blonde dreads and is wearing a peasant tie-dye tee over old jeans and sandals. The principal, uh, excuse me, Mr. Maddie. Let's see, let's do a principal voice. Excuse me, Mr. Maddie. here are the new students uh, we are expecting. Class, I want to introduce you to her. Her name is a little unusual. Love bubbles. Uh, maybe their names are unusual? A principal, yes, well, there you go. Students, this is Miss Love Bubbles. Everybody laughs at the same time. Love Bubbles, this is stupid. I shouldn't even be here. Parents, my parents um, have homeschooled me since I was. She turns to leave and the principal grabs her arm. The principal, wait, uh, well, until we can properly test you, we have to put you in by age. Mr. Maddie, uh, good afternoon, Miss Love Bubbles, was it? Please take a seat over there. He points to the desk Shiloh was at. Mr. Matty continues. Mr. Stanny has even provided a snack for you. Mr. Stanny, are you finished? Uh, Shiloh, yes, sir, I'm done. Shiloh walks back to um, his desk. He starts to clean potato chips off the side that Love Bubbles moves into. Shiloh, sorry, I had an accident. Love Bubbles, yeah, whatever. Reaching out his hand, hi, my name's Shiloh. Love Bubbles, not going to be here long enough to care. Exterior school, day. As the school bell rings, the front door is open and out comes a ton of kids. Love Bubbles is one of them. She walks down the stairs being bumped into by all the kids, knowing which way they are going. She steps to the curb and looks right and left. Shiloh exits the building and walks up to her. Shiloh, looking for your ride? Love Bubbles, not exactly. Shiloh, what then? Love Bubbles, I forget which way to go to get to my street. Shallow, where do you live? Love Bubble gives up and looks at him. <sighs> Pine Street. Oh, sh Love Bubbles. Pine Street. Shallow. I live on Pine Street, too. It's only about three blocks away from here. Come on, this way. Love Bubbles. Great. Reluctantly, she readjusts her backpack and heads off with Shallow. Shallow. You know, in the old days, boys would carry a girl's books. Love Bubble gives him another whatever stare. Seeing her look, Shallow, good thing we have backpacks now, Shallow. So what kind of name is, uh, I'm sorry, Shallow continued. So what kind of name is Love Bubbles? Love Bubbles, I guess it comes from my mom. Her name is Love Everyone, but they call her L.E. for short. So where did you move from? I'm sorry, Shallow. So where did you move from? Love Bubbles. Uh, Colorado. My parents were living on a commune. I guess I got behind on taxes. So the government seized it, and we're staying for a couple weeks with my mom's sister and her family. My dad said I needed to go to school for a while while he figures out what to do next. Shallow. Wow, a commune. That must have been cool. My dad's a tax attorney. Maybe he could help your parents out. Love bubbles. Maybe. I don't know anything about it. One day I was taking care of the horses, and the next driving to Kansas City. Shallow. It's not bad. We have really good barbecue. Sh Love Bubbles. I'm a vegetarian. Shiloh. Oh, that's cool. I don't think I'd be allowed to be. Love Bubbles. What do you mean allowed? Just stop eating meat. Shiloh. It's a family thing. Pine's the next street. Love Bubbles. Okay, this is looking familiar. I go left. Shiloh. Me too. Love Bubbles. What do you mean a family thing? Shiloh. We are a meat and potatoes family. Love Bubbles. That's all you eat? Shallow, no, we have pizza and spaghetti and burgers and ham on Sundays. Love Bubbles, I would probably die. Shallow, what do you eat? Love Bubbles, rice, beans, squash, spinach, salad. Shallow, sides. Love Bubbles, what do you mean sides? Shallow, you know, the stuff on the side of the main course. Love Bubbles, oh, you mean what we call food. Shallow, well, whatever, this is my house, third on the left. Love Bubbles, wait. What is your address? Shallow, 1975. Love Bubbles turns the paper she's been looking at and printed on it. It says 1975 Pine Street. Shiloh, you're at 1975 Pine Street? The realization hit, looking at each other. Shiloh continued, and Love Bubbles at the same time. You're my cousin? Love Bubbles, oh, this day just keeps getting better. Shiloh, you can't be my cousin. You're annoying, and my aunt's name is Ellie, like Ellie Mae. Love Bubbles, no, it's L.E., like love everyone, and as for being annoying, you don't have any mirrors. Pushing them through the gate, Shiloh, Mom! The gate shut on Love Bubbles, and she drops her shoulder and reopens the gate following him. 
interior house day. Opening Shallow's door, opening the door, excuse me, Shallow walks into what used to be his living room. There are now pillows and carpets hanging over the chairs on the table. Mrs. S, his mom, is vacuuming and Ellie is sitting on a pillow in front of the fireplace playing a ukulele with a lot of smoke coming up in front of her. They are exact twins. Shallow. By the way, I should point out, the exact terms are going to be played by Lyle, um, by Laura Gow because I wrote this for her, so she would be the ones playing the twins. Anyway, right age, you'll IMDb her later, I'm sure. Okay, shallow. Mom, what's going on? We're having, are we having stuffing for dinner? Mrs. S. No, honey, your aunt is saging to get rid of any bad spirits. This is your cousin, Aunt Ellie. Shallow. Hi. Ellie, it stands for, yeah, I know, love everyone, I heard. Love bubbles in her through the front door. Oh, you know my name? Mrs. S. And this is your shallow. My cousin. I know. We met. Mrs. S. Honey, we should go upstairs and talk. I know change is hard, but this was only for a couple weeks. Shiloh and Love Bubbles at the same time again. A couple weeks? Love Bubbles continued. Mom, you said a day or two. Mrs. S. Come on, let's go upstairs. Heading upstairs, Shallow follows his mom. Love bubbles. Mom, they don't sage, and they, they, they eat meat. Ellie, I know, I know your dad is looking for another commune. Ellie continued. He has a lead in Oregon, but we're going to, you know, we're waiting to hear. We're just going to have to make the best out of it. They have a treehouse. Love bubbles. Great. What am I, five? Interior bedroom. Continuous. Opening the door, Mrs. S and Shallow walk in and sit down on the bed. Shallow, Mom, they can't stay here. Mrs. S. I know your dad isn't happy about it either. I had to call I had the call this morning and they were already in town. I told them to come by. All they have was in a small car. Shallow. Mom, they don't eat meat. They're hippies. I mean, I thought they disappeared like, you know, fifty years ago. Mrs. S. Nope, they're still here. Look, you're always talking about saving the world and recycling. We get to save one family who are a completely different culture than we are. I bet they're all about living natural and recycling. We might be able to learn from them. Shiloh, how long? Mrs. S. We'll get them somewhere else as soon as we can. Exterior porch, night. Shiloh sits on the back of two legs on a plastic chair, drinking water out of a bottle. Love bubbles comes around the corner. Love bubbles. You're still up? Shallow. Can't sleep. What about you? Love Bubbles. Me neither. Shallow. Must be hard having to move at a moment's notice. Love Bubbles nods. Love Bubbles. Your dad seems really mad tonight. I could hear him yelling. Shallow. I miss football tryouts tonight. Love Bubbles. You don't seem like the football type. Shallow. Thank you. That's why I keep telling him. He thinks I'm going to get a scholarship or something because if I do, I'll be in science and not sports. Love Bubbles. He doesn't think you're smart enough? Shallow, no. He makes me so mad sometimes. Shallow stands and throws a water bottle into the lawn. All of a sudden, a blimp with a long tongue appears. It has a wide end with what looks like a large blue tongue. <laughs> and the slurp. <laughs> and the plastic bottle is sucked up. Whoosh! And the blimp is gone. Shallow continued, stunned. Did you see that? Love bubbles, stunned. Uh, yeah, what was that? Well, that was the first ten pages of the contraption. Uh, written by Laura Gow, our story by Laura Gow and Arthur Wassum, and just read to you now by Arthur Wassum. If you're interested in this story or any of the other ones, please go to artwassum.com. Remember, but, uh, you've heard it before, like, share, smash that notification button, smash the like button. I don't know if I have a join button or not. I kind of doubt I do. But if I do, you can like the join button too and send me money because, or just, you know, actually option the script and send me money. That would be really, really, really awesome. Anyway, um, so that's it. Ten pages. And I'll have another one for you in a oh, couple weeks or so. Anyway, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And write, read, subscribe, share stuff. You know, whatever. Have a good night.